Hi everyone, my name's Adam. I'm one of the directors at Manchester Collective and thank you so much for joining us for this online premiere of our show, Ecstatic Dances with Paul Hawksborough. Thanks especially to all of our new followers. It's lovely to have you here with us and I hope you enjoy what we've got for you this evening. Um, yeah, God, what a couple of months, huh? It's nice that we're here sharing this with you. I'm recording this um, at uh, 5.40 on uh, Thursday night and it's, this is gonna be going out pretty much in 24 hours time. So tonight, um, this, this was a really remarkable show for us. Uh, it featured a lineup that we had played a lot with before. Um, we'd done this quite extensive tour of a, a project called Sirocco, and uh, and with that amazing cellist uh, Abel Salauchwe and an electric bass player Alan Keary, and our and our kind of regular group, we built another collaboration with this Danish master of pipes and drums and bones. Uh, the great man of small instruments, Paul Hoxbro. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that um, he's a bit of an eccentric, Paul. You, you sort of have to be if you dedicate your life to the, to the study and development of these sort of mad instruments. And um, we had a huge amount of fun putting this show together, as you can probably tell on stage. Um, this show we recorded at the CLF Art Cafe in Peckham. It's an old cricket bat factory in South London. Um, and, and there's a bit of a disclaimer. The sound is not quite uh, what it would normally be for us when it comes to the recording. What you're going to hear actually, unbelievably, was all recorded on a Zoom recorder. So we've had a bit of a play with that. I think it sounds all right, but um, certainly it's not quite that Abbey Road sound. Um, I guess the only other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, like all of the other uh, kind of wonderful people working in the arts at the moment, the last couple of months have been pretty cataclysmic for us, really. And we've been absolutely humbled by the fact that so many of you have been in touch um, with your messages of support and emails, but also uh, donations of actual money, because unfortunately, you know, uh, as musicians, um, as, as incredible as the supportive emails are, you know, it, it sort of costs to put this stuff on. Uh, it's, it is a very, very difficult time for the sector and, um, you know, we're planning our work at the moment. We've got like the fourth or the fifth version of our plan for the 21-22 uh, uh, season that we're producing. And uh, there are some really exciting things coming up, but I know that it's not going to be possible without the continuing support of, of our audience. So uh, thank you for your ongoing support. Um, thank you for your continued donations and emails and messages. And uh, here we go. Enjoy these highlights from Ecstatic Dancers from Peckham. Uh, this is from a pre-COVID world. Just sit back and think of, uh, think of the good times. There will be more good times, you know. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.
Musicians playing pipe and tabor, a flute and a drum in every country. There is one picture, amazing picture, that I came across years ago in a little Swedish church in Estuna, in mid Sweden. It's a beautiful medieval church. You go in, and up on your left, you see a huge fresco. It's two musicians. It's a pipe and tabor player. Oh, you've seen that before. But opposite him, there is another guy playing pipe and snapperpinna. That's a rhythm boat in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very detailed um, pictures. So when I saw that, I just knew I was in deep trouble. I had to learn that. Um, and I'm still trying. <laughs> um, this is, and what did they play? Very short. If you met one of these pipe and tabor players, and he was a skilled musician, to a banquet or something, he would most certainly play an istampi for you. An istampi, that was a very, very popular instrumental form, played by all instrumentalists, harp players, fiddle players, you name it, pipe and tabor players even. <laughs> this build up made the learned clergyman Johannes de Corocero in the years 1300, write in his treatise De Musica in Paris that the Istampi was very suitable to be played for the rich and powerful people because its complicated form forced them to concentrate so much that they didn't have time to think perverted thoughts. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure that you agree with us that what the world needs is more Istampis. And here is one. It's always a start. <laughs> Thank you. 